Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and Rich Johnston is acting like a piece of shit. <laughs> I know, I know that's not one of the funniest thing is when you talk about Rich Johnston. At some point, everyone is always like has to interject that they hate him and that he's a piece of shit. To me, that's like the equivalent of like your friend has a new pool and you go over there and he shows it off and you're like, so you filled it with water, huh? He's like, yeah. It seems to be a popular choice. <laughs> Like, that is just, uh, it's understood. It's understood in any conversation about Rich Johnston. So before I start, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar getting to people still all over America, not all over the world. Um, it's, it's actually kind of funny. I do everything from my tablet. So sometimes when someone sends me a picture of like the poster, I've never seen this image that large before. So that's great. Nice knife. These are the uh, dog tags. That were a stretch goal. I love seeing my uh, book on the shelves. Here I'm with uh, uh, Alan Moore, Mark Millar, Jeff Johns, <coughs> and Jim Starlin. Good company. Nice dog. This one, I don't know, did I save? I might have saved the thumbnail by accident. This guy was saying that he thought, he was very excited. He thought Grand Bazaar was the best, uh, <coughs> the best one I've done so far. And then here is a, um, trying to see who it is. Nice uh, Mike Mignola Hellboy volumes. He's got two, four, five, six. Oh my gosh, that's stressing me out. So thanks for sending that in. Um, before I start, Jawbreakers Forever, a uh, graphic novel, is in demand. What are we at for backers? Oh, no, I just I did this. Thirty-seven ninety, so uh, great. Thanks for that. Iron Sights 3, Impossible Stars 2. Um, the interiors for Iron Sights 3 are complete. Renzo just sent me two more pages, so we're up to 50. So there's like seven more story pages left in Impossible Stars 2. Go check that out. So um, this uh, launched, and, you know, people send me uh, emails. And I had a little conversation with myself. I was like, okay, let me guess... It's Rich Johnston writing about uh, Young Ripa. Let me guess, because there's been many phases of his career. And lately, the last couple years, or uh, yeah, probably about the last two years, he's kind of been in, I don't know, like a different mode. Like, he'll just kind of write it normal, and he'll save the real, you know, kidney punches and insults and accusations. They will go, like, way down in the, or sometimes the last, like... He was punishing, what was it? Him and Heidi McDonald spent two years punishing Dynamite because they did a, a, a variant cover by Anna. Was it a variant cover for Cecil or is this, it was going to be a Cecil calendar? It was going to be a Cecil something. And that was, uh, they called that Comics Gate Gate. And so for two years, every article about Dynamite Comics had to have a link at the bottom. Uh, mentioning that, uh, you know, the huge issue. So I was totally wrong. He's back to the form he was in, you know, 10 years ago where the insults and the snide sarcasm and the accusations and the uh, purposely misconstruing things, first paragraph. So Eric D. July gets 30,000 orders worth $2.5 million for, quote, non-woke comic. Uh, Eric D. July is a libertarian contributor to the conservative network Blaze TV, founded by Glenn Beck. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going. It's like, he's not legitimate. Okay, so here's the deal. Oh, you know, uh, I, it's been very interesting uh, watching this grow. Young Ripa has been YouTube, on YouTube for 15 years. And he's had like, he's had like a musician phase. He's had a uh, political phase. He's had a pop culture phase. As far as I can tell, he's always done all three, but at certain times he'll focus more on one than the other. I think I remember like a year or so ago, he's like, hey, I might be chilling because I'm going to go, you know, tour with my uh, band for a little while. All right, cool. Um, but this is meant to dismiss him. This is meant for you to go, oh, he's one of those types. Oh, Glenn Beck. Oh, oh, oh. So it's, it's meant to dehumanize him. Um, uh, in a way that you can, oh, I'm, I'm not, okay. And when he had a comic book to crowdfund, they were happy to highlight this to their readers and viewers and to label it as non-woke. Uh, woke is, this, this is the part that pissed me off. 
Woke is defined as being aware of injustice in society, especially but not limited to racism, which doesn't seem anything that most people would be opposed to. Oh, shit! Rich Johnston just freaking turned over the freaking table. Oh, my gosh. I am re-examining all of my... Fuck off, piece of shit. You're actively trying to harm a black guy's freaking business. And you're to be like, I just don't know why anyone would have a problem with racism. I guess I'm just a good person. Woke is defined by that. Like, like that. By people who like being woke. I think a more general definition of woke would be, you know, uh, sanctimonious in support of social issues. That would be a more, you know, middle of the road uh, definition of it. If you look at something that's very popular with the boys, they are always uh, making fun of performative allyship, as it is called. They make fun of woke uh, in every single episode. So then he goes on. Um, the comic book is to be written by July. I'm pretty sure it's already done, and I'm pretty sure it's already been printed. Um, dry, you know, it's due in like two months. Uh, <laughs> it reminds me of that line from uh, The Simpsons. Uh, Homer is at an animation studio, and he's like, oh, is this going to be live? And they're like, no, cartoons are not usually live. It would be a terrible strain on the animator's wrists. <laughs> <laughs> is to be written <laughs> by July, uh, drawn by Cliff Richards, colored by Gabe Altieb, and lettered by Eric Weathers, um, and is intended to launch a new multi-book comics universe, The Ripiverse. Um, so then he quotes uh, some of their uh, advertisements. Either way, the quote non-woke label saw the story picked up by Fox News and the New York Post, which have helped spread the cry further. And the revenue, already in six figures, soon went into seven figures. Almost 30,000 pre-orders worth... Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to do a timeout on that. Uh, he's trying to set up this thing where it was like doing okay. And then Fox News and New York Post picked it up. And then, yo, those evil Glenn Beck... No, that's not how it happened. That's not how it happened at all. He built a platform for 15 years. He, he promoted this for at least uh, like the last two years. He's been mentioning it, you know, hey, I'm, I'm building this thing, the Ripiverse. I want to do it for, you know, this reason, that reason. It's going to be, okay. No, there wasn't like, it was a steady progression. You could literally watch this thing hour by hour. There was no giant spike when it was mentioned on Fox News. There was no giant spike when it was mentioned. And that's not really how it works. That's not how comic sales work. It, it was like $400,000, like two hours out of the gate. And it just continued on the trajectory. Uh, so he's trying to imply that it was, you know, evil right-wing sources that got him all these sales. Um, though the price for a 96-page comic of $35 plus $10 shipping might seem a bit on the high side if it wasn't for the virtue signaling possibilities. Wow, that was racist. <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't even occur to Rich in his mind that people could actually like young Rippa. That he might be something more than just his politics and his skin color. I can't name a single person he's beefing with. I saw it was, you know, I'm talking about long time beefing. I'm not, I'm not, I've seen him go back and forth with someone for like a day or two. You can't be like, oh, young Ripper, he doesn't get along with, wait, he gets along with everyone. How the, f how is that possible? How is that possible? What the hell? Yeah, he gets along with everyone. Like nobody has a problem. Problem with young Rippa, so of course he's going to do good. So, um, if Eric D. July wants to create a long-running collectible comic book universe for the Rippaverse, he might want to try and bring some economics of scale into play, or risk bankrupting his who, who the f or risk bankrupting his followers. What the fuck? You can get it for thirty-five dollars plus ten dollars shipping. This is. And he, he talks about this isn't just building, you know, this isn't just, what do you call it? Selling a book. This is building a company. This is decentralized. Um, think about how Rob Liefeld uh, doesn't own Youngblood. Uh, I saw an article with uh, Sylvester Stallone, and he's talking about he doesn't own any part of Rocky. And he apparently he's been trying for 40 years just to get a percentage. Just, to, you know, he says, like, I just want something... 
to leave to my family, that they own part of this thing that I created. And he doesn't get it. So people get excited about it for multiple reasons. One is they just like him. 15 years on YouTube, maybe, what, 5, 10 years in the, quote, culture wars? Nobody has a beef with them. <laughs> like, how is that even possible? I mean, there's people who just started beefing with him, you know, in the last few days for clout. But I, it looks like he just kind of went back and forth for, you know, a couple tweets. He's like, okay, you're on your own bullshit. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, but uh, risk bankrupting. Nobody's getting bankrupt off of a $35 graphic novel. And it, everyone knows it's like you're buying it for the book, but you're also buying it because he wants to he wants to do stuff like uh, Ben Shapiro and what is that? The Daily something uh, Daily Wire and how they're building um, uh, movie studios. And it's about more. And he's talked about it and everyone understands, you know, this is for the book, but it's also, you know, partially for him helping to build out all this stuff. And he has taken enormous risk upon himself. Over the last two years, I believe he's, uh, you know, paid for a almost 100 page book to be produced. That's a lot of money. Um, he has, I believe, other books are in the pipeline. So they're already being worked on. Mind you, he doesn't have this money yet. No matter how fast the payment processes are, he'll get, you know, a chunk of it probably in a couple weeks. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he said he bought like a, a building. He the the website. I don't think it's full time, but you have to pay, you know, thousands to build a website and then you have to pay people thousands to just monitor it so it doesn't crash, um, especially when there are a lot of orders in a small amount of time, relatively. So he's laid out. I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess he's laid out. One hundred thousand dollars of his own money. And everyone's like, oh, you know, he made, you know. Two and a half million. He didn't know that. Nobody knew that. I thought it was do. I, I thought it would do good. I was like, he's gonna do really good. Four hundred, five hundred thousand on his first crowdfunder. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> you know, it did a lot better. <laughs> but um, uh, even with today's comic book inflation, a ninety-six page superhero comic usually sells for ten to twelve dollars from a comic. That's just Rich being a piece of shit. He's talking about these. You know, uh, he's talking about stuff like you know the Action Comics one thousand or whatever it is. Marvel Comics 1000. He's talking about that. That's not those things are not the quality of a graphic novel. Fuck off. You know exactly what you're doing. Because Eric is indeed thinking long term and has a code of Okay, so he just just generally sarcastic. Um So he he's you know, he's talking about um so this this is young Rippa. There are a lot of young there are a lot of creative people that are in our space on our side of the line of thinking in support of the value of liberty. No matter whether you are conservative, libertarian, or whatever, they're just undiscovered. They're in hiding because they have to work for the old guard. So Rich is very interesting because it's never quite clear what he is. You say, oh, he's a journalist, but I've seen him say, oh, I'm not a journalist, I'm a reporter. Oh, I'm not a reporter, I'm not a journalist. Uh, he, let's just say he utilized, he takes the advantage of having press credentials. Um, I would say that uh, Heidi McDonald is magnitudes more corrupt than him, but she's infinitely corrupt. So it's like, you know, it's hard to, uh, but, and I've described him as like the Joker from the Dark Knight. He just wants to watch the world burn. But there's actually a quote from the Ramones and it said uh, something like, I want to rebel against society but I want there to be a society that to rebel against. And that's kind of how I see him. I see him as like, you know, they talk about the old guard. He's like he's like a he's like a very sarcastic palace guard. Uh, one of my favorite new TikTok uh, channels. I forget what it's called. Uh, it's weird. Like channel names are not that important. You're like, oh, I know this person. Um, but like the channel name, it's like the slappable jerk. It's like, OK, I, I, or uh, scumbag dad. Uh, but like, it's like, uh, I just know him as like, that's the guy who does this bit. But, uh, you know, everyone w likes to act like soldiers are like super brainwashed or like psycho, but it's more just like a really sarcastic blue collar worker. So Rich likes to cause problems. He likes to see people hurt. He likes to see people trip and fall, you know, back their car into a, you know, a gas pump, whatever. 
but he's also going to protect the industry. So when the industry uses, uses a bunch of flim flam to say that things are better than ever, meanwhile, no raises for 20 years, people ask to take lower than their page rate, to lower their page rate, all these people on GoFundMes, all this money, you know, being, you know, from other sources, he's going to protect that source. The other thing he's been huge on lately is the, um, the hit comic from Boom that nobody talks about a week later. Just nobody. Boom has another hit. The hits just keep on coming from Boom. Boom, will you ever... S no, nobody's talking about this. Remember you had the Stephanie Phillips Monster Hunter book? It was like, this is it's just, it's just breaking records every week. No, come on. So he, he, he harms the industry to a certain degree. To a non-fatal degree, he will hurt the industry. But he's always going to protect it. That's why I call him a particularly sarcastic palace guard. So then, he, so then this, this part is not Young Ripa. This is Rich. I did get a flavor of, to paraphrase the Blues Brothers, we have both kinds of politics here. Conservative and libertarian. That's not remotely what Young Ripa said. He said that there are people that are gatekept out of media. Most of them are conservative or libertarian. He wants those people to be able to express themselves and run businesses. So going on with Rich, but there are many places outside of the corporate controls who publish comics and many self-publishers who choose to do it themselves and have done for decades. Just not everyone has been able to frame it in such a way to get coverage from their media employer as well as Fox News and the New York Post. I don't know what that references as far as I can tell. Uh, Ripa works for himself. Um, oh, are they saying because he like wrote an article for The Blaze that that's his employer? Okay, that's a stretch. Um, this part really bothered me. Wow. There is also another question to ask. And stumbling across this accidentally last week caused all manner of ructions. Okay, so first of all, he did this like blind item that was mainly a hit piece against Mark Millar, who he is obsessed with. But the timing made everyone think it was about Ripa, which now I thought it wasn't. I thought it was just him using any, any excuse to obsess about Mark Millar. But apparently this was a shot uh, because he was basically like saying, like, oh, I'm going to uh, avoid Indiegogo and Kickstarter so I can just do my own uh, website and just claim any type, you know, type of success. And nobody can check on it. So it looks like he actually was trying to harm uh, young Ripa. He says, there is also another question asked. Running a crowdfunder on Kickstarter or Indiegogo gives some measure of a surety of the pre-orders listed. Okay, you need to talk to Heidi McDonald because her corrupt ass for the last two years is saying like, there's no transparency from uh, Indiegogo. We can't trust any of those numbers. It's like, they're, they're literally the backers and the numbers. You you all just, you and there, you can go on backer kit. You can track it. Um, remember when I showed the backer kit of Joe Glass and like, the day before it closed, like it had this massive freaking donation that was not matched by an also massive increase in, in backers. It's easy to see when someone has tampered with someone. But she still said, Indiegogo, that's not transparent, even though it was transparent. Now, here's the deal about uh, Ripa. Ripa has 15 years of his reputation. He has 15 years of dealing with people and nobody had a beef with him until two days ago. I would absolutely trust him 100% on all of the numbers for his company. And there is no reason to not, it's not even, there's no reason to doubt him. There's no reason to even consider doubting him. So it's just disgusting that Rich would do this. Um, but running a crowdfunder on your website does not. There is no independent voice to state that you got the orders you say you do. So if you make a headline of it, how can that be verified? As it stands, the Ripaverse crowdfunder does not have verification. There is no independent source to confirm the order numbers, but it has reported repeatedly without that caveat. It's certainly a believable figure, though, especially given the media profile ISOM has received. And still, with many months of crowdfunding left on the, crowdfund on the crowdfunded, is eight figures next? Yeah, I mean, it's possible. But um, uh, you just tried to imply that he was, he was lying and he was defrauding people and he was, yeah. You don't get to say, it's like, oh, it's just so curious. 
But the numbers look fine. Well, if the numbers look fine, then don't fucking bring it up, fucking piece of shit. Anyway. Jawbreakers forever. I really should have... <laughs> is one of these links the link to the... Uh, I don't know. Is it this one? Okay, so we'll go to the Blaze, which is apparently his employer because they paid him to write a couple articles in the past sometimes. Here it is. <laughs> Be pretty ridiculous to like cover this and not go to the page. So there it is. Um, uh, 2,600,000. Uh, this is the most successful comic book crowdfunder in history. Not only is it the most successful, but it has eclipsed entire careers. I have it a company for four years. I am currently at 2.3 million, almost 2.4 million. That's in four years. He's in about, I don't know, five or six days right now. So he's doing good. <laughs> he's doing quite good. And we're, it's, it's funny. There's all these conspiracy theories. One of the old one was um, uh, all these people are just passing money. Uh, one, you know, uh, this person will do good and then they will pass their money to this one. What the fuck? You have all these people arguing with each other, their friends one year, their enemies the next, and their friends again. And all those people are passing money around. Meanwhile, they're paying taxes. Meanwhile, they're paying uh, platform fees. Meanwhile, they're paying money transfer fees. And it just, and no, that's ridiculous. This is not a theory, but it's just like a, a devil's advocate. You know what crazy theory would actually make way more sense than anything? That shill media sites and Twitter psychos were actually working for crowdfunded people because they make them so much goddamn money. Time after time after time after time. Twitter weirdos and corrupt media sites have helped crowdfunders become millionaires. Now, it used to take a couple months. It used to take a couple years. Now it's happening in a couple days. I believe it took like 30 hours for him to get his first million. He was at second million within what, like three or four days? And he's going to be at the third one, you know, by, I don't know, the end of the week? 67 days left? So, uh, gee, Josephat, got worked up over this. <laughs> it's it just, it is so fucking annoying to me that they will bang the drum about diversity over and over again. And they have come out. Hammer and tongs to destroy a black guy's business because they jelly. Because he peanut butter and they jelly. Like, it is just so, like, how do you do stuff like this? Try to hurt someone and be like, I'm the good guy. I mean, he wrote for the blaze. So, I mean, like, I'm the good guy. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jawbreakers Forever. Iron Sights 3, Impossible Stuff. I didn't know what to say. It's just like, yeah, that's Jawbreakers Forever. It's, it's hot in here. It's a long day. Sometimes you don't know what to say. You just say the title of your book, and then you just have dead air for five seconds. Thanks for watching. Bye.